Hello folks. This is the emergency edition of uh, Tea with the Druid 119. Facebook suddenly has just changed all the settings and it's just impossible for somebody like me at any rate to be able to use it at short notice. So by next week I guess we will have got the hang of it. But in the meanwhile I thought what I'd quickly do is go downstairs from where I usually do the broadcasts uh, record this for you and then whack it up on um, on Facebook. Um, what I wanted to talk about, you know, this is I was particularly keen to do the session tonight because of course we're all going through this extraordinary situation and um, a friend, a doctor, uh, a member of the order who's on the front line of the uh, uh, battle with the virus at the moment has distilled a bunch of what he calls landmarks, pointers to uh, ways in which we can uh, think and feel and act uh, at these difficult times. And they're really profound, beautifully expressed, really clearly, simply expressed. And I wanted to go through them with you. I'll post the, the, the suggestions, the landmarks up on the post with this video. And I'm just going to focus in on the, the, the first one for tonight. And he goes, um, he just says, refuse to let this thing rob you of your life. Revel in every moment of, moment of bliss that you can. Acknowledge and allow every sad or frightened feeling as also sacred. Now let's just let's just analyze that because there's so much in that it really pays just letting it flower in in our minds. Um, starts off refuse refuse to let this thing rob you of your life. So for me, what there's there's energy in that. Starting off a statement saying refuse, it's um, by not it's not refusing to accept the reality of the situation. That's different. That's denial, uh, which is so tempting because it's so protective. I think it's taken me quite a bit of time to really take on board what's happening without kind of pretending at some level that it wasn't happening. Uh, this, this refusal is something else. It's a positive channel of, I've written here, of our refusenik, our rebellious side. It's saying refuse to let this thing uh, rob you of your life. Um, now what does that mean, rob you of your life? Um, that's exactly core, what Peter's done here, Peter Corston who wrote this, has, has come up with the core concept in mindfulness, which is when we're fully alive, we're fully engaged in the present moment. So all these mindfulness videos and meditations and trainings and Eckhart Tolle's work, The Power of Now, etc., they're all designed to get us to be fully in the present because we know that when we experience the present fully, we are in the now and we're fully living. Of course, we're living when we go back in our minds to the past, but you see how the energy changes when you go back into the past. It's slower, there's less energy in there. You go back into the past, you call up memories. Or what often happens, of course, is you ruminate about the past. You, and that's one of the sources for depression. Ruminating, churning things over and over. If only I'd done that, if only this had happened, if only that had happened. The other way we avoid being in the present is, of course, is to go forward into the future. And again, of course, we're still alive, but we're not fully living in the now. Instead, we're plotting and planning, and if we're not careful, we're also worrying about the future and how things are going to turn out. And of course, something like this virus brings this into sharp relief, because everybody worries, are they going to get ill? Are people that they love going to get ill and die? Are they going to die? All these concerns take one away from being fully alive. So that's what I believe Peter means when he says, don't let this rob you of your life. Don't let you, don't let spend the next few months worrying, worrying, worrying about the future when we could be fully present in the moment, fully alive. And he leads in the revel in every moment of bliss that you can. So he's using the power of alliteration here. Refuse, rob you, revel in every, every moment of bliss that you can. Because there's that magic in the power of now, when you realise that every moment, seeing a, a starling outside, seeing 
uh, but a light and seeing it for what it is, looking at specific objects, treasuring specific moments. And the, the word revel is lovely. It's not a word we, we often use, so it, it has this freshness about it, reveling, really basking in, 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 in joy. Um, and then um, I put here reveling, basking, bathing, opening to all these evoke ideas of what we so often fail to do because we are too busy or distracted. Now's our opportunity. This, this epidemic is giving us a kind of jolt and an opportunity to revel in everything, that it brings us joy. Moments of bliss. Moments of bliss are, are free and require us just to focus. So that's the first idea in Peter's suggestion. So uh, let's look at the second. Acknowledge and allow every sad or frightened feeling as also sacred. Why acknowledge and allow? Is he just enjoying alliteration again? No, they're different processes. It's one thing to acknowledge something. I acknowledge that you're hurting. It's one thing to acknowledge, bringing it into awareness. And another thing is to allow or accept it. That's, that's, it's, it's subtle, you see. I, I acknowledge that you're angry with me, and I also accept that. I allow it into my awareness. So it's like first step, acknowledgement, second step, allowing. There's a whole lot of stuff in here. There's a whole process in psychotherapy called ACT, uh, Acceptance Commitment Therapy, which is all built around uh, accepting, working with accepting things. Because, of course, we all know of the concept that what you resist persi persists. The more you refuse to accept the situation, like if, if, if I refuse to accept the fact that we're in lockdown, the harder it's going to get for me because I'm going to be pushing against the imposition. If I accept it, then I can just open up to it. And um, it doesn't, it's not the same thing as agreeing to something. Um, that's really important. Acceptance doesn't mean necessarily agreeing. It doesn't mean to say you have to like it. Uh, that's different. Um, and, and so what he's saying is, is here, acknowledge and allow every sad or frightened feeling. And you know how you get little glimpses of sadness and fear, and certainly what I do uh, is I quickly push them away. I'm kind of a naturally happy person, and uh, I just push them down. But they pop out in my dreams. They pop out sideways. You it's far better to welcome these feelings in. It's not welcoming the cause of the feeling. If I welcome in to my consciousness my feelings of sadness, uh, frustration, anger, upset, pain, uh, grief around the epidemic, it's not the same thing as allowing the virus in. It's not accepting that. It's not accepting the threat. It's, it's accepting what I'm feeling about the threat. We make the distinction. It's almost as if at some primitive level we confuse the threat with the emotion of feeling that threat. So this just brings in more consciousness to get us to separate out the feeling uh, from the threat itself. And we allow the feeling in. But Peter's idea goes beyond the psychotherapeutic idea of uh, acceptance commitment therapy and uh, the commonsensical idea that it's better to accept things just to resist them and, and fight them. Um, by, um, he goes beyond that to the spiritual level by su suggesting that we acknowledge and allow every sad or frightened feeling as also sacred. What does that mean? Um, this, this is the mystery. So in this first landmark he's given, this first suggestion, He's presented this mystery that what if my feelings of fear, my feelings of uh, concern, uh, were sacred? It's like, what if I honour them rather than either being cross with myself for having them, being annoyed that they're disturbing my peace of mind? What if I allow them into my awareness and even say they are sacred? A mystery here. Let's have a meditation now and let's 
go in our usual way into the sacred grove, connecting with the earth and the sky, the protection of the trees around us. And then when we've settled into that, let's just welcome a creature into the grove. I'd suggest a deer, for me, like a young, like a Bambi creature, a little young baby deer coming in, who's been hurt in some way, perhaps hurt its leg. And let's give, let's welcome that frightened and upset creature and give our love to it and our healing. And so, if you're willing now, you might like to close your eyes. And whilst being aware of being seated in your room, watching the screen, or having the screen in front of you, you just let that awareness drop into the background as you allow yourself to become more and more aware of being fully present, coming into the sacred grove, the clearing in the forest. You might perhaps see yourself coming through the trees coming into the clearing and then sitting down and becoming aware of the earth beneath you. The earth beneath you, you tune in to all the life in the earth, all the energy in the earth and you feel the healing energy of the earth flowing up into you. And you feel how the earth has a slower pace, a slower rhythm. And feeling grounded and stabilised by the earth, you tune into the presence of the trees around you. And you breathe in the perfume of the trees. And you take in slow, deep breaths deep into the belly. And then you become aware of the sky above you. And you breathe in the energy of the sky. And the energy of the sky brings vitality. You breathe in the energy of the sky, which meets the energy of the earth within the center of your being. And if it feels comfortable for you now, you imagine opening your inner eyes within the sacred grove. And you look into the clearing which is bathed in light and you see a little creature coming into the clearing. Perhaps a young deer who's frightened and alone and who has hurt herself or himself. And you just radiate warmth and love towards this animal. And it tentatively comes closer and closer to you, recognizing that you're its friend and that you can help it. And you now place the palms of your hands on the creature and you send it love and healing. Nothing you need to do, nothing you need to strain yourself about is just, just feel your love for this animal that you're holding. May this animal be healed, may it be protected, may it live long. And you feel its little heartbeat starting to slow down. You're gently stroking it now perhaps. It's starting to feel better and it's starting to heal. Do 
you now feel the animal is ready to go back into the wild. So you take your hands away, you place your hands on your heart, and you say to the animal, a blessing on your life, and a blessing on the land. And you watch the animal as it leaves. And you come back to yourself, seated in the sacred grove. And you know that you can come into this place at any time for healing. You know you can lie on the ground and receive the healing power of the earth. You know you can breathe in the healing scent of the trees. You know you can breathe in the healing energy of the sky. And feeling fully grounded healthy and whole, fully present, here and now. You gradually allow your awareness of the sacred grove to fade as you become aware of being seated in front of your screen. And when you feel ready, you slowly open your eyes. So a blessing on your life, a blessing on all our lives, a blessing on the land. I'll post this video up now on Facebook and uh, on YouTube and I'll post Peter Gorston's uh, thoughts that I think you'll find really helpful at this time. And in other sessions I'd like to explore the other thoughts, the other suggestions in this, in this list because I think they're really, really helpful for us at this strange and unique time. So have a wonderful week and I'm now going to get up and turn the machine off and I'm not even going to top and tail this video, I'm just going to whack it straight up. Okay. <laughs>